before the chamber, Senator Sampson. Uh, thank you very much, Madam President. My colleagues will be pleased to uh, find out that, that that is the last amendment uh, that I'm going to run this evening, and I will just uh, take a moment to kind of bring us full circle back to the beginning of this conversation, which is that the bill before us uh, is taking language that uh, has been understood and followed and uh, trusted as our practice for eligibility for voting by absentee ballot for 90 years and turning it on its head. And I have tried my best to uh, work with the majority to accommodate their um, interpretation of what our law should be based on a combination of factors, including the recent Supreme Court decision to extend uh, illness beyond the individual and uh, to other uh, persons that might affect that voter. Um, that was not the most eloquent way I could put that, but basically our current law says that um, only eligible um, uh, voters uh, become that way based on their own personal illness. And the Supreme Court decision leads us to believe that other factors um, and other illnesses beyond that person should make someone eligible. And I don't disagree. And uh, we offered a couple of amendments tonight for the purpose of trying to accommodate that concern. What has me standing here and offering so many amendments and taking the time of this body is that the bill that is being passed goes much farther than that. I believe what it does is it opens up the absentee ballot statute in our state to make it apply to every single soul in Connecticut. And as a result, uh, create uh, a backdoor way to no excuse absentee voting. And worse than that, a uh, invitation for a massive expansion of mail-in voting that we witnessed uh, in 2020 and predict uh, we will witness again in this election. Um, I'm opposed to those things, uh, Madam President, not because I'm opposed to expanding voting. Uh, I have made it clear in this debate, and I think in pretty much every other debate we've had on similar issues in this chamber, that I am very much in favor of expanding access to voting and will vote for it every chance it's offered to me as long as we are simultaneously protecting the integrity of that vote. And the reason why that is so important to me is that when you expand voting, and you do not simultaneously protect the integrity of that vote, lots of bad things are happening. You are creating doubt and division among the people who reside in our state. You are creating more animosity between the political parties because they suspect that someone is up to something. And we witnessed that, as I mentioned, in both 2016 and in 2020 from opposite sides of the political spectrum. And you are potentially invalidating legitimate votes for legitimate voters by counting votes that are not legitimate. And none of those things are acceptable. I have, I think, laid out a pretty strong argument that um, there are many deficiencies in expanding uh, mail-in voting. Many of them, and I would say the majority of issues that I've presented, have nothing to do with fraud at all. They have to do with problems with the process. The fact that voting by mail can never be as secure as voting in person, for one. And if you are going to expand mail-in voting, now you have lots of new issues to deal with. How you're going to verify that the appropriate person received the ballot application at the appropriate address. That means maintaining our voter rolls. Making sure that the proper person completes that application and sends it back. Making sure that that application actually makes it back to the polls on time. And I've pointed out numerous cases and documented cases where people were disenfranchised because their ballots were lost in the mail, um, or they were received after election day, or they simply didn't understand the process well enough to know to get their ballot in the drop box before a certain time. In every one of those cases, people were disenfranchised and lost their opportunity to vote, and that was needless. It did not have to happen. I also went through quite a lengthy um, list of cases of actual fraud. Now, it's not all-encompassing, and I'm not suggesting that there is so much fraud in the state of Connecticut with absentee ballots that it is invalidating the election for president or anything. 
I, I would never claim such a thing. But to say that it's non-existent is also completely dishonest. It is absolutely existent. And when you go from having a few thousand absentee ballots cast in an election to 650,000 absentee ballots cast in an election, like in 2020, you're going to exponentially increase those numbers of people committing fraud. And that's a problem. There's countless other things we touched in this debate, including the cost of the situation, um, ballots that were unaccounted for, and so on. In response to this policy, I've worked hard to try and work with the majority to come up with a compromise that actually achieves their stated goal. And I'm disappointed that I couldn't get there by trying to draft an amendment that does exactly what is claimed the bill is supposed to do. Nor could I get there by offering the exact language of the Constitution when it's claimed that all we're attempting to do is mirror the Constitution. Well, I tried to mirror the Constitution best I could by putting the constitutional language in an amendment. But even that was not acceptable. In fact, the following amendments failed on a party line tonight. I think that in this upcoming election, voters are going to have to measure what our, their policymakers are doing on these subjects. And they shouldn't do it simply by, well, you know, my legislator voted to expand uh, absentee balloting and the opposition was against it, because that's not a true statement. The opposition is not against it. The opposition says if you're going to do it, you should do these things. And that person should wonder why their legislators voted against, against using a word-for-word -word constitutional language in the bill, or attempts to verify the citizenship of registered voters, or to verify the signatures of returned absentee ballots, or uh, that the Secretary of State should annually audit our voter rolls, or that drop boxes should be monitored, or that we should not have an expensive, costly, wildly inaccurate mass mailing of unsolicited uh, ballots at all, or even requiring people who assist voters to be well documented to make sure that they are not uh, engaged in ballot harvesting. And there's a few other ones that I missed. There's no reason why those items should not be law in the state of Connecticut as we go farther and farther down the road of expanding mail-in voting. And I'm disappointed that we are not acting together in the best interest of our constituents to make good policy here. It seems like the majority wants their bill their way and all of the good ideas that were offered and many times I was told tonight that my ideas are good, but none of them were adopted. And that's wrong, Madam President. I encourage us to work together for the good of the people of the state of Connecticut to make good policy on elections. That's all I ever wanted when I said um, uh, to first Senator Fasano and then Senator Kelly, please keep me in charge of the uh, ranking membership of the GAE committee. I want to be there to make sure we have good elections in this state. And I still believe that. And I still believe we can work towards uh, no excuse absentee voting in the state, but I'm never going to support that until we actually tackle the hard questions about making sure that our elections are above board and that no one, Republican or Democrat or otherwise, can say our elections are not up to snuff. We need to care more about how people react to the policies that we make and that they trust that we are working in their best interests. I'm going to vote no today on this uh, bill, uh, Madam President, um, and I encourage my colleagues uh, to do so also and to put a stop to this legislation and let us regroup and come back with something more beneficial to the citizens of Connecticut. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Will you all the senators voted. Have all the senators voted? The machine will be locked. Mr. Clerk, please announce the tally. Substitute for House Bill 5262. Total number voting 34, total voting yay 30, total voting nay 4, absent not voting 2. And the legislation passes. <laughs>